All right, next up, I have a pro tip for you guys. It's a five-star expert level formula tip. These are the types of tips that you'll want to pay attention to if you want to become a true formula power user in Excel. And what I'm going to show you is one approach to count matching items between two or more lists. And to do this, we're going to combine the sum product with the COUNTIF function to return the number of matching values across those lists. Now in this demo, we'll have two different tables or ranges containing products, product list A and B. They may have different numbers of items in them, but we know that there's some overlap between them. And the goal is to use a cell formula to identify and count that overlap. So what we'll do is calculate a few items here, the number of items in list A and list B using simple count A formulas. And then here's the key, we're gonna calculate the actual number of matching items, in other words, the overlap between list A and B. So what's going on here is the count if function is iterating or cycling through the rows in one of the lists, and it's checking if a match exists in the other list. For every row that finds a match, count if assigns a one, and for every row where a match doesn't exist, it counts a zero. And from there, the sum product function basically just adds up the resulting array of values. And that total gives us the number of matching items. So one quick note here, in this case, we're referencing list A first, followed by list B. You can swap the order, doesn't matter. Either list can be used as the basis. So a couple common use cases here, like we're showing here, just calculating the overlap between two lists in Excel, or confirming that lists are unique to make sure that you're avoiding any sort of double counting errors. So let's go ahead and jump into the pro tips workbook and actually practice writing one of these sum product count if functions. All right, so in your pro tip workbook, we're looking for the counting matching items demo, green tab in our formula tip section. Go ahead and press link and we'll jump out to our product lists here. And scrolling through, you can see we've got two lists of products. Uh, product A list is about 100 units long. Uh, list B is about 89 or 90. In fact, we can use count A functions just to kind of return those descriptive stats. So count A, column A, minus the header. It's gonna give us 100 items in column A. And then same process here, count A, column B, minus the header, 89 items in list B. Now, one thing that's gonna help us out just as far as readability is concerned is to give these lists proper names. So instead of referencing A2 through A101 in a formula, I'd like to name this something like list A. So I can select the first item, hold control, shift arrow down to grab that full list. And in the name box here to the left of the formula bar, I'm gonna enter list A. So I've given it a proper name, I do the same thing with list B, control, shift, arrow down, name this one list B. That's just gonna make our formulas a little bit easier to work with as we continue. So before I go ahead and start populating a function here in cell E5, the way I like to learn these more advanced techniques is to start with the component pieces understand those really, really well, and then assemble them together into the final result. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that will be helpful. Let's right click and just add a column here. This is gonna be like some blank workspace. And if we ignore the sum product component altogether for now, and just focus on what the count if piece is doing, let's try writing a count if function right here. And the first range is going to be list A. And as you start typing, you'll see that named range populate. You can just tab it in. And so we're gonna count the items in list A that match a given criteria, which in this case, let's start with cell B2. Close it off, press enter. And now if we drag that formula down or double click to apply it, you'll see a series of ones and zeros going all the way to the bottom of list A. And what's happening here in each row is that the count if function is saying, okay, does B2 exist within list A? Yes or no. If yes, return a one. If no, return a zero. And those references change to B3, B4, B5. So essentially every one you see here in column C reflects a match. 
And in fact, if we select all of column C or the specific range and look at a sum, that sum is 33, which in theory should be telling us the total number of matches between these two lists. Now, one thing to note is that I don't have to just reference B2 here. I can change that reference to the entire list B reference and press enter. And watch what happens when I apply that down, nothing changes. As I click through, you don't see the formula changing at all, but the actual reference, the value that we're trying to match is changing row by row. So we still get that number 33 matches between the two lists. And now one other thing, if I swap the order of the lists here in column D, same approach, count if, this time list B first, followed by list A, you'll see a different pattern of zeros and ones because now we're checking for the items in list A and mapping them to list B, but check it out, the total when you select the whole range is still 33, which is why I said that you can use either list as the base. So it's worth noting that you could stop right there and use a normal traditional sum function to add up these values and get you that matching item number of 33, but we're gonna take things a step further and create that value or calculate that value without having to use these two helper columns. Instead, we're gonna use some product, which can essentially create these arrays within the formula itself to calculate the same sum and return that value of 33. So I'll show you what that looks like right here. In cell F5, we're gonna start with the sum product and the array that we're summing in this case is literally that array that we just created, either version, which was based off of countif. So we can type that same function we just did inside of the sum product function, countif list A, the criteria is list B, again, either order, close it off and press enter. There you go, 33 items. Now we can actually delete these helper columns doesn't matter, won't impact the formula at all, we still get that correct value of 33. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with Excel's array style formulas, you may be kind of scratching your head a little bit here because we've essentially just created a formula that behaves in a very unique and unusual way, right? It's creating its own array of values behind the scenes and then processing that array to produce a single value. Now, when I was first learning about array functions, one thing that I found very helpful was using the evaluate formula tool. And what this will help us do is just break things down and diagnose how all these pieces are working together. So we're gonna start from the inside out because this is a nested function and we're gonna evaluate this piece by piece. So list A, which is the range argument of the countif is as simple as the cell range that we're referencing, A2 through A101. And list B is going to be our list of criteria. And so what we should see when we evaluate this list B argument is an actual array containing every product or every item within that list, which is exactly what we see here. 89 individual items all packed into one array. And then the next underlined component is the entire countif function. Now that we've evaluated both arguments, we can evaluate the countif itself. And check this out. This array should look very familiar because it's the exact same series of 89 ones and zeros that we generated by writing a countif cell formula and applying it 89 times or to 89 rows. The difference is we're doing that here as part of a sum product function and essentially replacing those 89 functions with one. So it starts to give you a sense of why these array style functions are so powerful. Now, last piece here is the sum product. In this case, we're using sum product in a pretty simple way. We're actually not even using the product part of it because we're feeding it just a single array. All the sum product's gonna do is add those values up. I do have one tip where we're gonna talk about uniques and duplicates where we add one level of complexity to this. But in this case, keeping it simple, just gonna feed the sum product this one array, add up the ones and zeros. And we evaluate that final step. There you go, we get our 33, and that should do it. Now, for those of you who are familiar with array functions, the question that I guarantee is on some of your minds is, 
why didn't you use control shift enter when you type this sum product that you're calling an array function? And the answer is sum product is one of the few functions in Excel that behaves like an array function, but doesn't require the control shift enter approach. So just like I showed you, it's as simple as pressing enter and it behaves just like any other function. In this case, I actually could replace the sum product with a simple sum and actually use the array approach and enter this with control shift enter. And I'll get the correct answer because again, we're not using the product component of sum product. So either approach is totally valid. I actually prefer the sum product approach. I'm going to control Z to get back to it. Uh, just because, you know, I don't like to remember that I have to use control shift enter. I'd rather treat it like a normal formula. So there you have it. Great demo showcasing how you can use these tools like some product and countif to do really powerful things in Excel.